Good evening. It's good to be here this evening with you all. I am Phil Shepard. I was born and raised in eastern North Carolina, Oslo County. Lived there all my life. I worked 36 years in Marine Corps Base at Camp Lejeune as a civilian Marine. I've been a bivocational pastor since 1997. I've served in North Carolina General Assembly for eight years. I'm currently on my fifth term. I've been in the General Assembly, made some tough choices, tough decisions, but we did it. I'm pro-life, pro-NRA. I believe that marriage is between a man and a woman. I voted for HB2, did not vote to repeal HB2, would not. No. Thank you, I want you to vote. Oh, no. <laughs> 10 seconds. 30 seconds. Anyway, rated 100% by the American Conservative Union this past year. I've been in the frying pan, I've had to make tough decisions, and I look forward to doing that for you in Congress if you'll let me. I want your vote and support. Thanks again for allowing me to be your question. I believe that um, going to Washington will be like it is in Raleigh when we got there. We had to learn that we had to compromise on some things. I will not compromise convictions and my moral absolutes when it comes to doing and supporting the president. I think he's doing a great job on economics in our country. We're in better shape than we've been in for years. I do support him on building the wall also. There are some things that we can work on, such as um, reducing taxes, a balanced budget amendment, and so forth. And I will support a balanced budget amendment and work toward that. We have it in North Carolina. I believe it will work for our state. Thank you for the question. At this time, I don't have anything that I really disagree with our president on. I think economically he's doing the right things in our country because we're better off economically now than we were several years ago. I agree with his foreign policy as far as it, as it pertains to Israel. As far as building the wall and taking money from the military, I wouldn't support that because I think we could reduce the deficit and build the wall if we take the billions of dollars that we're sending overseas <coughs> to people that are our enemies and bring it back home and use it here to protect people in this country. And I would support the President on that. And if I had a problem with some issues here in eastern North Carolina that, was, that would be a problem with our constituents, then I'd seek a meeting with him and discuss it with him and say, listen, this is not good for Eastern North Carolina. Can we do something about this for me? As a legislator, we have supported commercial fishing and also recreational fishing. I want to say to you tonight that as a congressman, I'll do the same. It's absurd that the federal government would establish regulations without the facts. Before we put any regulations into effect, we need to make sure the facts support <clears throat> there is a shortage or whatever with the fish. If not, we don't need to be obstructionists are keeping our, our fishermen from trying to make a living provide for our state in this world. So a lot of times we have theories, but I want to see the facts and the figures and what it says that tells the truth about if there is a shortage or not. And so I have supported fishing in our state and will continue to. First of all, all this escalated the eight years that we had President Obama. Uh, during that time, uh, I think he allowed people to break the law and get away with it. Why well, have laws if we're not going to enforce those laws? So first of all, it's wrong to illegally come here and we should not have allowed them to break the law. I'm, I'm worried about our trend that's going on in this country today. Not only breaking the law to come here illegally, but people now feel they can destroy public property, statues, wherever they may be, and get away with it because the laws are not enforced. We need to start enforcing the law. We need to build the wall because of the drug activity, the human trafficking, and also the criminals that are coming across this border. It would save us billions of dollars without those aspects coming into this country. So that's what we need to do, enforce the law. Thank you. American veterans and the United States Armed Forces, and how would you face those issues? I think the top concerns of facing American veterans tonight is health care, uh, the VA hospitals and so forth. Uh, many times I get calls from veterans because they can't get the medicines they need or they go to a clinic and they're, they have to stand in a long line. Some of them drive out of town because the one in Jacksonville, I know, is not sufficient to deal with the veterans that are there. I think those are important issues to the veterans, and I'm willing to look at that. I believe we need to do more to help our veterans, if it even means opening it up so they can go to find the hospitals and physicians for their needs and so forth, and providing those funds to do that. The shifting of inlets and beaches have resulted in enormous losses of public beach access, property, business, and infrastructure. As a member of Congress, what will you do to ensure open, dependable, and navigable waters in both deep and shallow drought waterways? When I went to the General Assembly in 2011, that was an issue we faced as legislators. Uh, as previously stated, uh, we weren't allowed to put hard structures there. I supported an effort, and we worked to get six inlets where they could use hardened structures like terminal groins or jetties and so forth. 
uh, when you dredge them, like the New River Inlet that we dredge, you dredge it one week, the next week the sand's back in place, so our fishermen, our shrimpers, and our military can't get out again. So I would support legislation to help with that and try to find funding. Uh, last year I went to Washington, D.C., and we lobbied the Department of Transportation as the transportation chair to help uh, our Oregon Inlet, also to help with buying a dredge for our ferry division so they could keep the channels clear there for the ferries and also to provide infrastructure for Moorhead City Port. Uh, and we got funding for that just because we went and lobbied for it. And I would continue to lobby for those funds to help to have the infrastructure we need in Eastern North Carolina for our inlets, our fishermen, our military that so vastly need those inlets and for them to be clear. And that way to keep the sand on the beach where we want it. Thank you. Thank you again for the opportunity to be here tonight. Also, I want to say to you, I've served eight years in General Assembly. I've been voted as 100% conservative this past year by the American Conservative Union. Um, I'm a bivocational pastor, so I know what it is to serve people and serve God. Uh, with that being said and done, I enjoy serving the people of Eastern North Carolina in my district. And I look forward to the opportunity, if so pleases you, to serve you also in Congress. I believe constituency is a very important part of that. And I promise that my office will be responsive to you, your requests, your needs. My door will be open. Uh, thank you for allowing me to be here tonight. PhilShepard.com for Congress. Thanks. Appreciate your vote and support. God bless you and our country.